Hi, thank you for watching. So this is a part of our banana bite series. This is really like a very small, but very delicious bite. Um, one of my favorite foods. And so this is one of my favorite topics, the veins. Um, it really is like a nice case, I think. I hope you'll agree of how to put everything together, the clinical presentation, the imaging, cross-sectional, angiographic, everything has to fit, right? Like in the end, when we're looking at how to like understand imaging, how to manage patients, how to um, understand flow, like this is a little nice bite that leads to a lot of different things. So here's the case, venous sinus thrombosis, all right? Uh, patient's doing very well, Got bad headaches, but nothing focal. And so we have to understand from all of this, like how to put it all together. Bottom line is a couple of weeks of headaches. Here's a CAT scan. Again, brain is fine, right? Here's the MRI. Um, again, no, you know, the rest of the parenchyma is okay. There's no whatever, the hemorrhage, infarction, anything. Um, and she's doing fine. From that perspective, uh, here's the MRV. It's a contrast MRV or you could just do a volumetric MR, post contrast, that works great too. Now here we have to pay attention to the details, right? This is where it becomes important. Where is the clot? So the clot is in the superior sagittal sinus, mid anterior portion, you see that here. Now coming down here, we see like a skip lesion. So there's no clot here, which is interesting, right? It's a bit unusual and important, of course. Everything here is important. Um, now, when we come down, okay, what's going on here? So here we see, like, again, there's, like, the left outflow is a little bit dominant. So here's, like, patch of clot in the transverse sinus on the left. Here's a diverticulum, and that's filled with clot, too, and sigmoid sinus, a lot of clot in there. Uh, very proximally on the left, the sigmoid is open. So you should pay attention to that, right? On the right side, which is slightly developmentally slow, smaller, we see that, I don't know, transverse seems okay, but there is some stuff in the sigmoid. It looks subocclusive, but it's hard to tell sometimes. The wall's enhancing, whatever, hard to know. But this is what we have, generally speaking, right? Um, and so this is what happens to her um, after some heparin therapy, as you could see, the subdural collections, um, there's now like an acute, huge component. And so what happens is she gets drained of this and comes to us for an MMA embolization to top it off. So we get to do the angiogram as part of the MMA embo. She's off heparin also, whatever. There's like, these are the different clinical considerations. She's doing well, again, from the clinical perspective. Now, now here we're going to put this together, uh, the MR, the CT and the angio. So what do we see on the angio venous phase, right? Injection, um, a lot of stuff here, but we're gonna take it like um, all together. So to analyze that, look at the frontal lobe. So what's happening here? Obviously here's that thrombosis in the sagittal sinus. Now, where is the lobe gonna drain? Well, it's gonna drain somewhere. It's draining into this trillard system, right? There's like all these surface cortical veins are, um, you know, having some hard time, but ultimately they're finding their way successfully, as you know from the MRI, into this trillard, which drains via the patent portion of the superior sagittal sinus into this very obviously like impressive mass of veins here. Now, what those are, those are suboccipital veins, right? You want to call them occipital, they're venous plexus, right? Now, how does the blood get to that? It gets there via this emissary vein. So there's oftentimes, there are obviously emissary veins. Um, all of these things are covered in different pages of this website. We'll get into that a little bit. Uh, right here, you see this connection. You see like often like below the torcular, uh, probably related to the occipital sinus, there's like often a, a little vein, a little hole, an emissary vein here. There's usually one in the sigmoid area too. So you can see this right here, that's the arrow pointing to this vein right here. And you see it's a small, it's not a big hole, but you see how much it's doing. It's like a tremendous thing of augmentation of what can happen, especially on the venous side. Um, and this is like a brain saving hole right here because um, essentially all of that superior sagittal sinus drainage goes through this channel. And that decompresses into the cervical veins 
And that's one of the reasons why she's doing so well, right? So we have to understand that, it's very important. Now, what's happening with the rest of the hemisphere? So obviously the trillard was the dominant thing in her. That means the sylvian veins here are developmentally hypoplastic, right? You don't see much of the sylvian system. Now, when the sylvian, superficial sylvian veins is what I meant, are hypoplastic developmentally, something else, there's always a balance, right? This whole notion of venous balance is key. If the superficial ones are hypoplastic, usually the deep ones are bigger, right? And so what do we see? We see this vein. Is this the labae? No. Is this, uh, what is this? Um, well, you should see the basal vein of Rosenthal page because it's an important finding right here. This is the basal vein. It's the anterior and mid portion of the basal vein that you can see that right here on the frontal view. And that's connecting via this vein, which I'm not gonna tell you what the name of that vein is because please look it up if you don't know, there's go to the basal vein page. So there's this connection here with the superior petrosal sinus. The superior petrosal sinus is draining into that open segment of the sigmoid sinus. Remember that on the MRI, this was open. That's coming out into the jugular. So now you've put like stuff together for the right hemisphere. You understand there's a lot of clots. Despite all of that, she's okay. Why? Because of this alternative outflow. Not you understand all of this and just say, yeah, whatever, she's fine. But um, sometimes that's true. Um, sometimes people are not fine and you have to understand why. Like um, if she had a big, true big labe here, she wouldn't be fine. Um, if she didn't have this hole, she wouldn't be fine. Uh, and this hole is doing a ton of work. So this is like an example of how to put everything together. Now we go to the uh, left hemisphere. This is just a good look at these veins again. You see like this is amazing. It's crazy amount of veins. Now the other thing that you see here, we didn't really discuss that too much is all these like there's some diploic veins here you see in late venous phase. Those are also important, uh, but we'll skip over that. Um, what we would like to see, let's see. Hmm. Ay, ay, ay. Where is the. Oh. Let me see some. Is there no. Oh, do I have to do this again? Oh. Hmm. Okay, I am doing this again. Um, I'm going to put this on the, we have to see the left hemisphere because that's important, but I ain't doing this again. So I'm going to go here where we prepared this thing here. Archives. Give me one second. There you go. I'm pulling up the injection of the left hemisphere, which somehow didn't end up being on that page. We're gonna share a different page now. This one, there you go. All right, so look at this. This is the left hemisphere injection. Mm -hmm. Now, what do we see again? And I put this together in this patient here. On this side, what you see is the dominance of the superficial sylvian veins, right? They were hypoplastic on the right. They're not, um, so on the left. So on the left, there's dominant sylvian veins. And you see those are going to collect a lot of this territory here. And they're going to drain down uh, into um, like this. You can see them kind of like coming up around here. Um, and uh, they'll be draining via like another channel. That's uh, We don't have to talk about that right now, but it's also some important stuff. It's another like diploic channels. And they're going down into the pterygopalatine venous plexus. Okay. Um, the rest of the hemisphere is a little bit congested, but again, like things are finding their way. You see how like all these little veins are going down into the sigmoid sinus. There's some stuff open that's coming up into the uh, superior sagittal sinus, and then again, coming into these veins here. And then here you also see the superior ophthalmic vein. Now that's um, a common injection. So sometimes you see that just normally from common drainage, but in this particular case, there's a retrograde flow via this vein out because the superior ophthalmic vein is also like a nice big conduit that uh, can uh, reverse flow. And there's a little bit higher pressure, obviously, in the head, but she's tolerating it well. And that can be reversed and that can drain 
via these angular veins and whatever into the face and then help out as well. Now, uh, when we go back, we're going to share this screen now again. We're jumping back here. Go back to the MRI. You can see on the MR, this is that emissary vein, which I keep harping on because they're so important. You know, this tiny little vein. This is the one of the importance of this case. Like we don't really talk about all these alternative outflow. It's just a jugular cavernous, but there's lots of little holes that can be life-saving um, in situations like these. You see how small this is, but it's tremendous flow going through that, and that's keeping her in decent shape. Now you obviously often see them on CT. This is what it looks like on cat skin also, quite inconspicuous. And so here we are, a little bit of a bite. We've been chewing on that bite a little bit uh, of a long time, but it's a good one. Now, all these pages here, venous sinuses, superficial venous system, deep venous system. Now, this is where you find information, background information on this kind of anatomy. The basal vein page. Now, we don't really have a... Um, an emissary vein page, we'll get one. Uh, but we do have these diploic vein pages. So diploic veins are more or less like, you see this diploic veins kind of serve the same purpose. So we have a diploic vein page, you can look at that. And with that, we finished this particular bite. And thank you for joining. Hope you come back for more. <laughs>